following up to uh, the Matec board setup on my Ranger 2000. Now I'll just show you how I've mounted it here. These wires coming out here are for the camera and video transmitter. Uh, that just means that I can remove the, uh, the top hatch. The board is mounted up here on this little mezzanine deck I suppose on a piece of coreplast. It's just sort of, I'll pull it out actually, just mounted on a piece of coreplast and that just jams back in underneath where the wing is there. Keeps it nice and secure and uh, you can just jam it back in that holds the back nicely secure and either tape down the front or just sort of jam that little wedge in there to hold it still means that i can pull the board out if i have to and, and plug the uh, usb cable into there something else i've done is uh, rssi this yellow wire here that's a single RSSI wire going to the RSSI pin on the board. There's the RSSI port down the bottom uh, it's RSSI there, so it's just the signal pin this yellow wire here going straight to the signal the RSSI pin on the flight control board and you just enable it in the INAV configurator and it seems to work. I've never had RSSI on screen before so that's uh, that'll be interesting. I haven't actually tried it yet I wanted to try and have flaps and maybe even uh, crow breaking uh, while I'm using the board. I've made channel 8 spare in the iNav configurator, it doesn't do anything else. So that means that the PWM channel 8 is spare, so I can plug the flaps into there and just have it on the slider like I normally do, straight from the receiver. Uh, all the other channels are going via SBUS to the board and I can do whatever I want in the iNav configurator with that. I did play with the flapper on function in INAV um, and my ailerons were actually going up which was what I wanted for crow braking but it was at, at the wrong end of the uh, slider scale so I haven't really worked out how to get flapperons and flaps at the same time. At the moment I'm just, I've just got flaps working. Uh, I have yet to try that out but uh, I will try it soon. Now the GPS unit someone pointed out uh, in the comments of the previous video that this GPS unit in the specs it says it's uh, uh, supply voltage of 3.3 volts and I, uh, where I've got it plugged in on the board it's actually supplying 5 volts and I've always run these GPS units on 5 volts um, but it got me thinking uh, why was I doing that and thinking back uh, Matt Ogborn in his series of INAV videos uh, said that even though it says this is a 3.3 volt GPS unit it has a voltage regulator in it so it can handle uh, varying input voltages and it gets scaled down to 3.3 for the GPS unit itself so 5 volt supply is absolutely fine with this one. There you can see the RSSI showing up on the screen it seems to be working okay at least the numbers are changing there. The fly time I have uh, put the alarm down to zero so that won't flash no matter how long I've been flying. I've moved all of these values over away from the edge so that they're not sort of uh, overlapping. I think my milliamp hours was uh, only showing three digits. Satellites up here, I can't acquire satellites in the shed, it's a tin roof so it just doesn't work. I've got the direction graph here, uh, I don't know, you may need to have the compass connected up for that to work properly but I'm going to fly it anyway. Maybe it'll pick up the north, south, east, west uh, while it's flying from the GPS direction, we'll find out anyway. Now what else have I done? I'll show you some more stuff. Pitch degrees, I've angled the board 3.5 degrees in the pitch degrees and that, that makes the plane fly level in angle and horizon modes. In the modes tab I have also enabled servo auto trim and auto tune. I've never tried them before but Pavel Spachalski has uh, put out some very nice little videos explaining how they work and they look like they would be useful so I'm going to give them a try and I've put them on channel 11 and 12 and you'll see there's none of these have channel 8 I've sort of cleared channel 8 so that I can use it for the flaps on the PWM output straight from the receiver I've taken out the failsafe switch because I know that works quite well I don't really need to keep that one there uh, what I do need to do is try uh, the most scariest thing of all and turn the radio off while it's flying and see if it goes into proper failsafe mode uh, I'll do that in my next flight on the OSD so I've 
clicked RSSI and that made the RSSI show up here and I've moved these values over here in, in away from the edge. Heading graph is what I was talking about down here and the alarms over here I put all them down to zero I don't want any alarms really the fly time here that was 10 minutes and that's why it was flashing when it got over 10 minutes so if you put it down to zero that disables that alarm basically could have an RSSI alarm there uh, but I've already got one spoken in my Tyrannus so that's that's what I rely on usually now in the receiver tab is that that one receiver tab there we go I sometimes play with these values here the RC Expo and the manual RC Expo that's on 70% which is a hit pretty high Expo value my normal Expo is 30% but I thought I'd try it at 70% and see what the auto tune and the auto trim does and see if that works any better so I'm leaving that on stock which is 70 or 0.7 so now what I have to do is uh, take it out in the field and test all of those changes that I've made try out the auto trim auto tune try out the see if the rssi reading is reasonable see how the flaps work i can't sort of put in some elevator compensation so i'm just going to have to be on the sticks to do that anyway let's head out to the field <laughs> 